Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Waterside Press, whose logo is Putting Justice into Words. Now, they've produced a very interesting student textbook here, which we're going to look at this morning. Its title is Serial Killers and the Phenomenon of Serial Murder. Mm, difficult subject. Been written by David Wilson, Elizabeth Yardley and Adam Lines with a forward by Steve Hall. Now, Elizabeth and I talked about this book and we've given it for our review title this. It, we've said an important new book from Waterside Press covering one of the most unsavoury areas of law and criminology, serial killers. Now, the review will be in the journals and on the web. Let's look at the book first of all. You've got some well established faces there of people who've done most appalling things. This is the front page. <coughs> That's the spine and then at the back there's some detail about the book and it mentions the authors. Then we go into the book itself. It runs to just over 200 pages. There's the index at the back and you've got um, an interesting series of uh, chapter headings uh, right at the end. And you do have something which I found helpful and good for criminologists you have um, effectively key points. He calls them key terms, but it's to, to assist. For instance, this, key, this key, ter uh, key term is doubly deviant, which I'm sure if you are a criminologist, you will become very well aware of quite quickly because we do have a little language of our own, both in um, pure and applied um, criminology or theoretical and applied criminology, if you want to call it that. There's the front page. And then there is the contents, the basic information about it, and then the content section. You can see how it's structured with the various, there's an introduction, well worth reading, then quite a large number of examples of very well-known cases, um, then detail about the authors. This is a textbook and it is a book about criminology primarily. It's not here to glorify anybody, it's here to try to, to explain in very simple terms, what is going on um, in, with what is called the phenomenon of serial murder. And it's something that's international, it's not just local, as you will see if you look on the television screens, you hear about the latest outrage in one country or another. Then there's an introduction there, and then we get from that, let's say you've got key terms all the way through which assist. And then there are some tables, various tables as well, uh, which do assist to a certain extent uh, in trying to make certain points. They obviously do deal with some very important people. For instance, there's a table, an overview of British serial murder from 1888 to the present day, which gives you some idea of where we are. I mean, it's very, very difficult to uh, make sweeping generalisations, but there is basically a, a certain level with the amount of of uh, this sort of homicide, which is uh, uh, actually conducted. Uh, it's a, as I say, this is a difficult book in some ways. I actually found it very readable, and I think as long as you're not too impressionable and you've got some expertise about what is going on in this particular area of, of law and sociology, I think the book will be of great value because what we're dealing with is it is a phenomenon, serial murder, and we're dealing with really unpleasant individuals, real difficult people. Now, what I say about this and the way we've put this book forward is to say that this is not a student textbook for the squeamish criminologist. And I say that because as a teacher, I've had problems with some students who frankly are not suitable to do this sort of study and they don't like some of the things that they have to look at. So if you don't like this sort of thing, you don't have to read it. But if you are a criminologist, it's a book you should certainly know about. I'd, actually, it's easy to read, and it deals with all the main issues, but from the stance of the criminologist. So we're looking at it really very much from a professional point of view, and as I say, they're putting justice into words by, by producing it at Waterside. Um, now, especially then for those learners who currently attend further or higher education, they might find it helpful, the trouble is they have this magnificently absurd view which is currently doing the rounds when deciding what we can and cannot discuss, say, in our students' unions, in the event that the subject matter or topic is politically incorrect. 
Well, let me explain in, in teaching criminal law or criminology that that concept and in jurisprudence, that concept must go because if you are looking certainly at philosophy, it must be seen very quickly that there are going to be subject uh, parts and areas of subject uh, matter and material that is really not very nice. I've seen it on the bar course where people objected to some of the things we had to do in the law of evidence. Well, as the, the sub-dean said, if you don't like it, you shouldn't be doing the course. And I think that's the point. You do have a choice about it. And having got that off my chest, let's go into the book a bit more detail because this particular book from Waterside breaks the mould by using a criminological basis throughout its nine chapter headings to investigate what is rightly termed a phenomenon. And such books, I s suggest, are worthy of serious study for any undergraduate embarking on a course of study in theoretical criminology because the public, uh, publishers really are putting justice into words. And what they're doing here is an, it's a readable book. You can get through it very quickly, but it will give you some aspects of, of thought about where we are at the moment, certainly with uh, theoretical uh, criminology. Now, writing in the foreword, Steve Hall describes the book as a student-friendly and practitioner-friendly primer, and he's right. That lays out the whole of the issue of serial killing in a, in a very good way, I think, and it, its underlying contexts are in a very clear and comprehensive text set out, of course, by the three authors. And we found this particular title to be a deep and insightful book which addresses specific issues competently with useful referencing throughout and which requires, I suggest, some understanding of introductory criminal methods and models. And I'm not trying to overdo that, but I think it will assist if you've got some concepts of where we are within theoretical criminology rather than coming to the subject um, as a brand new reader. Although that's not to say that it, it is not it is something you can pick up because it is really a student textbook. But it's really for people who have an interest in this particular area. Hall also comments that the framework deployed in this book moves beyond biology and psychology, whilst not ignoring their insights, to construct a contextualised, victim-centred structural analysis of vulnerability. And he continues commenting that the argument in this book does not preach from any typical standpoint position, whilst it does acknowledge insights from such positions and leaves them open to debate, which I would suggest will encourage further criminological research. And I also would say that that, that is one of the great benefits of the book, because I said at the beginning that at the moment we are seeing some unfortunate things happening where debate in some areas is being stifled, and you can't have that in my view in academic study because, and certainly you can't do that as a practitioner. I mean, you can't have a position where I'm, you, people turn around and say, I'm not representing that person because I don't like him. I mean, that is not the basis upon which one is called to the bar. And people who turn around and start taking that sniffy approach shouldn't be barristers. It's different if you're a solicitor, but the, the main point is you must have an open mind. And I think that's really because of the nature of what we're dealing with here, that is what actually comes across. Let me continue by saying that the book also <coughs> introduces learners to empirical complexity whilst avoiding dogma and uh, it's not too heavy uh, on the criminological theory side. Hall is right to say that the authors offer students a gentle introduction that poses important questions as it hits the ball into their court which is an interesting tennis analogy. Uh, now, we began this review with the perplexing problem of freedom of expression in our universities, where elements of censorship are appearing on a more regular basis now in the more closed minds of some students. Um, with that point in mind, this book, Serial Killers and the Phenomenon of Serial Murder, doesn't close the student's mind in the reductionist way that some standpoint positions do, but we would suggest it opens them in a way that will encourage further reading and independent progressive thought about one of the most disturbing and impenetrable of all chronological issues, the serial murderer. So the revision questions and the uh, bibliography at the back 
I think are also most helpful additional materials. Let me conclude by saying this. The final word is best left to the authors in their introduction, uh, that where they say, we study serial killing and serial killers because in their actions we begin to understand better our culture, our values and our civil society. For us, serial killing emerges as the elephant in the sitting room of public policies that create a culture of them and us and a society where there is a widening gap between the haves and have-nots. Now, I have deliberately, when I've used these comments, uh, tried to avoid elephants in sitting rooms because that's actually, I'm sorry to be have a bit of levity, I think you have to, but elephants in sitting rooms, I do see what they're saying, but let's go a bit beyond that because this really is a tough subject and it's something I think, I'm very glad that there's an intelligence or an intelligent and an intelligence approach to it, which I think does help any scholastic study. Let me finally say this is a uh, this is the value from the quote I've just given you, the value of the book for the criminologist um, and a well worth book for reading and rereading because it is the them and us society which we've really got the problem with. Remember when you look at the individual names of the people in this book, where they come from and what sort of lives they've had. There's the book again, I'll just show it to you. There's the side the spine and then the back. And if you open it up, you are looking very much at specific people. Their theoretical perspectives on serial murder. There's a, for instance, this is chapter two. If you look at the, and then further reading, but I should have mentioned this earlier, at the end of each chapter there's further reading, which again helps, I think, and there are, of course, the revision questions. But what you do have is, again, you've got um, various, for instance, they do Munchausen syndrome. They, um, you've got a whole range in Chapter 3 of people, named individuals. And when you see them, you see what we said at the end and what the, what the author said about them and us and the difficulty of this elephant in their sitting room of, of what they call public policies. An interesting point. Um, I've stressed that a little bit because I think this is a very important book. Um, I don't underestimate the value of the books from Waterside Press because I think they're very good quality books um, and they give a tremendous amount of assistance to us in our general understanding. I'd like to thank uh, Brian Axe Gibson particularly for producing this book. Thank you. Um, it's a good read and it's something you should definitely look at if you're studying criminology and the wider readership. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.